with over 2,000 IBM employees dedicated to working on RFID technology. From portal readers to specific applications, enabling the tracking of pharmaceutical drugs, food, vehicles, hospital patients, students, and offering financial solutions for a new financial order, one can see the aspirations of IBM to dominate every sector, including the obvious. IBM claims in the marketing literature relating to RFID that the planet will be interconnected, intelligent. People want it. We can do it. How will IBM's interconnection be achieved? As RFID techs communicate to RFID readers, the readers can in turn communicate and transmit data over telephone or by internet to computers. And of course, satellites. On December 15, 2004, Orbcom announced an application development agreement with Verichip to be its provider of satellite and telecommunication services for applications to be developed for use with the implantable RFID Verichip. The Orbcom constellation consists of 29 low Earth orbiting communication satellites and focuses on M2M, global asset monitoring and messaging services. M2M translates to mean machine to machine, man to machine, machine to man, machine to mobile, and mobile to machine communications. Under the terms of the agreement, Verichip and Orbcom will develop and market new military, security, and healthcare applications for use in the United States and around the world. Okay, we now have a patented human implantable microchip, a system that allows you to be tracked via satellite, RFID patents for tracking people, IBM controlling a census, financial transactions monitored and recorded. What else are we missing to put the web grid into place? Smart infrastructure, example, RFID sensors and portal readers. How will this be done? By petitioning government, as this example in Australia shows, for IBM to include smart technology and infrastructure spending. IBM's Australian arm, Glenn Borham, stated that the Australian government should embed computer chips and wireless devices in the nation's infrastructure and that this smart technology was a way of beating the global financial crisis. Mr. Borham says this plan can be implemented if the government works with businesses to create pilot projects in Australia where we can set up a town, we can set up a small community. He goes on to preach that putting smart devices into cars could solve a lot of traffic problems. If we were able to look at a network of understanding where cars were on a road, that, filtering into computers, could analyze data and do predictions. So that they could say, well, if there's a breakdown here, it will have this sort of flow and effect. We could then actually get information to people in real time. The question Glenn Borham fails to answer is what right does IBM have to propose to put a spy chip into Australian citizens' vehicles without their consultation and consent. Moving along, what else does IBM propose? Let's add a global identity system into the mix. Cal Slimp, the vice president and global leader for security and privacy, stated that an international standards backed up by a UN body are needed to clear up the international identity verification mess. IBM Secure Identity Solutions offer organizations a wide range of advanced identity verification solutions. Capabilities include the use of smart cards, biometrics, RFID, identity management, and security systems. Slimp goes on to say, IBM is trying to create a mosaic for what countries want as good identity management. Wider international cooperation is needed to establish a common language and standards. It is interesting to find out that the common language for exchanging user access information is also known as Federated I Am. This is an interesting choice of terminology, at the very least. Cal Slemp went on to more grandiose statements to say, What's missing right now is a trusted third party to authenticate trustworthiness. That's rich. IBM has denied their involvement with the Hitler regime. They denied selling census data to the Nazis and they now self-appoint their company to be the World Identity Sentinel. Pass and double pass. As we stand on the cusp of the Orwellian Dark Age, we need to realize that Verichip is not static technology. When the Verichip was first released, it was a crude RFID solution that posed no threat to civil liberties and humanity. But as the evolution of the Verichip continues, some red flags have been raised. Scott Silverman goes on to gloat. As we continue to build on our partnership with receptors, which started with the development of the glucose sensing RFID implantable microchip for diabetics to have the ability to measure glucose levels in their body through an external scanner. 
We are moving beyond patient identification to sensors that can detect and identify illnesses, viruses such as swine flu and other emerging diseases. This is an exciting next step for the future of our healthcare division. As we have already documented, with the shady and questionable FDA approval Verichip has obtained, this makes the swine flu pathogen sensor microchip an alarming progression. Sweetheart deals can be struck with the World Health Organization and governments worldwide for Verichip to become the swine flu solution when the media hysteria promotes the pandemic. Keep in mind, Verichip has gone on record to say that the implantable microchip could be worth a whopping $100 billion in revenue comprising of 26 vertical markets. That sort of revenue by any company's standards is stupendous and would require a great part of the world's population to be chipped. If you thought the unholy alliance of IBM and Verichip could not get any worse, it does. Guess which company manufactures the Verichip? A little company known as Raytheon. This is the fifth largest defense contractor in the world and the world's largest producer of guided missiles, best known for its Tomahawk missile. And looking over in Seoul, Korea, we find IBM's ubiquitous computing lab, the Sensor and Actuator RFID Solution Center. The Seoul Center specializes in sensor and actuator RFID enablement, working with clients to deploy IBM Sensor and Actuator RFID solutions. The center's capabilities include sensors that can detect patterns by using multiple streams of sensor data for automatic analysis of human behavior and habits, including who you are, where you are, what you are doing, and predicting your next action through data correlation. This is what we have to look forward to. We will deal with this in more depth in our next film, including why IBM is building the global brain and tackling the modern day eugenics movement, transhumanism. But imagine for now an internet of things, where every object from cans of coke to jumbo jets to human beings are uniquely identified via their EPC, electronic product code. And remember the tattoo that began as an IBM number well, now they want to put the tattoo under your skin, a unique number that is the barcode on steroids, an interconnected, ubiquitous computing, electro-meshed, real-time web, where billions of objects are tracked simultaneously, all through an evolving internet protocol and an ambient intelligence environment, an environment that reacts to you, as it is aware of your movements, through sensors, portals, wired and wireless networks. These objects, humans, are tracked from birth with history, data files created on them as they progress through their entire period of existence. A goldfish in a fishbowl has more rights than we do in this controlled system that we have explored. Today perhaps marks the first day you have been introduced to the human implantable technology. Perhaps you have been aware of it but pushed it quietly to the background. Rest assured, this is a collective war we are fighting and although it is not being fought with guns and ammunition, it is being waged on your mind and your free will is at stake. So put down your credit cards and remotes, form rank, and dig deep with us. Petition your local members and government. Network. Share. Use the resources on the website, and let's march forward as a collective, united group that can and will stop this encroaching agenda. You are not an animal that needs to be branded. You are not a product that needs to be identified. You are not a number. Send a strong and united message to Verichip, IBM, Raytheon, and all the other companies that wish to enslave you and your family that we the people will not be chipped. This isn't only a privacy issue, this is a human rights issue.